This episode of Smirking on Reviews is brought to you by Carol's Botanical Gardens and Euthanasia Center. We've all been there. Friends going on a supply run, getting into a spot of trouble, finding out that they're bitten and would, would soon become one of the undead. So how do you deal with this situation in a kind, humane way? Well, that's where Carol's Botanical Gardens and Euthanasia Center comes in. She's over the years created some beautiful gardens where you can bring the person who's been bitten to come look at the flowers. Give them the choice of one last look at how beautiful the world can be before you end their life. With one of many garden types to choose from, and if you don't have the stomach for it, Carol herself will put down your friend or loved one herself. And remember, your burial comes free with admission because then you get to become fertilizer for the flowers themselves. So remember, come to Carol's Botanical Gardens and Euthanasia Center and just look at the flowers. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews. How y'all doing out there? Today, we're back talking about The Walking Dead Season 10, Episode 18. It is called Find Me. Uh, I want to thank everybody that has chosen to start watching some of these videos. I know they don't get a lot of action, and you've got plenty of choices to choose from. I hope you like the ad before this. We do this a lot on the channel. And if you are liking what's happening on the channel, uh, or... And, you know, you find something else you like on here that makes you want to like or subscribe, hit the bell for all notifications, all that jazz. Otherwise, let's get into it this week. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up from last week, right, was when they found Maggie, right, and they got found those walkers, right, in the semi-trailers. And it got me thinking about something before we get into this episode anyway. And it kind of fits for this episode, too. Uh, especially when I talk about what I'm about to talk about, is they should know by now, right, all the trouble spots. They know this area around them very, 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 very well. So how come they still somehow end up getting ambushed all the time on this show? Uh, places like where there's a bunch of semi-trailers, right? Shouldn't you just be like, I think that's, I don't know, maybe it's just me. But it just feels like that the characters would know to avoid certain places or have already cleared them out. I don't know. Because that's one of the things about this episode that kind of made me feel right about talking about that. Because this is about Daryl and Carol. And it's a really, this is a really great episode character-wise. It does not move the plot forward, you know, of... The Walking Dead, except that moving, when they move forward, your characters are actually different. They actually have grown or de-regressed in some cases, you know. And for this, you know, I, I loved how it starts with the Daryl and Carol banter. The, 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 the great back and forth that these characters have, these actors have, after all this time, you know, uh, they have chemistry like in spades it is great watching them work off of each other and it definitely shows how successful a limited series spinoff could be and I, I i am looking forward to their spinoff series i hope it's not something that runs uh or overly long like the show itself um i hope there's a real point to it i hope that uh it's all like all roads are leading to you know the same point or all stories anyway i feel like that's kind of what's going on 
uh, with their direction of the show. But, and it's also, you know, like, I was thinking about my attitude about the show and what we kind of talked about last week about why I left and everything and stopped watching for a while. Um, was that, you know, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay, it only took me about 10 seconds to remember what I was thinking of. Because I, I think it's interesting that, you know, one of the reasons when I walked away, all right, was frustration over the show being too far off from the comics and the handling of certain characters and things like that. But in the end, like they really the the show gave us what we what a lot of people wanted, including myself, which was the back in the day it was the if Carol or Daryl dies we riot. It became a thing, right? It became a real thing. And so in the end as we've lost other characters and actors from this show who've moved to the absolute forefront of it. Past Maggie, past Negan, past Rick now, you know, and Michonne. It's Carol and Daryl. They made the show, they tailored it to what the fans wanted. It's not the first time this has happened, but they literally said, hey, if we, we will lose the audience if we lose Carol and Daryl. We can do things like comes from the comic and we can lose characters like Glenn or Abraham or even, you know, Rick and still have the audience there. And I, and I think that that's a real testament to the audience of this show is, you know, me being in the minority of the, the comic lover first and, and being devoted to the comics before the show. Um, shows that the audience you know really can stick with something sometimes to me even you know beyond the point of reason but that's <laughs> that's not me raking a diss it's just you know sometimes things get stale and people move on and i know a lot of people have moved on from this show but those of you that have stuck from the beginning i mean it's like how i feel about agents of shield I've been on board with that from the beginning as people were like, uh, I don't know, and get, got, as it got poor ratings, never did as well as a Walking Dead ever, of course. <laughs> but, you know, now people are starting to find that show after the fact. But I get it because there were, you know, times uh, watching even Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season five in particular. It, I almost wanted to leave the show at that point. But I still stuck with it. And so when I was thinking about how I, how I left watching this show, I realized, you know, when I made the decision to come back, it was right. Because I never really left. Right? I was always talking about it. And people would just be like, are you sure you're not still a fan? <laughs> but let's get into this episode because it really is about Daryl and Carol. And how I love this beginning. This beginning that fools you. This beginning that you see this this banter that everything's fine, and as Angela Kang talks about it in uh, the the inside the episode stuff, it really is deceiving. It really has this great tonal change where people can act like they're fine, and really not be. You see hints of it though, in the clever banter, some little bits of truth in the banter. Um. Also, like, that thing that she put in her back, in his backpack. I didn't quite see what that was, but they never really talk about it here. Somebody else will, somebody will put it in the comment section of what that was. I didn't want to rewind it because I have a limited amount of time to get these this episode done uh, before work um, <laughs> today because I'm recording this at 7.25 in the morning. Um, I also thought that the, the her little subtle, uh, strong right foot sewing machines was really funny like she does things in that like subtle not too subtle but like trying to drop hints that she can do things it's always just it's part of the banter but Carol's always been like this and I, I really like how she kind of finds ways to try to help or insinuate herself into things and that's not a diss again that's a great it's just part of her character um but they're out there, right? They're looking for deer. I question mark on that, you know. Uh, what are they really out there? You know, like, what are they really out there for? You know, what are they looking for? 
Um, I think they're out there to have this conversation eventually by they by the end of this day where they get to because they talk about you know she's talking about do you think our luck's run out i mean alexandria hasn't even fallen and she's talking about it like it has you know she brings up hilltop she brings up alexandria she says maybe not yet meaning to me that she thinks that maybe because maggie's there they're about to lose it again and when and with the decisions that she's made that led things there maybe you know she wants to run again and that's kind of been a theme for carol uh, throughout the show after around the prison when she made the decision to kill the people who were infected and was basically run out of town you know she's always made decisions that were really big uh that she thought were right to help and there were times that that's to me she's always been right about certain things and how she's done them they've just been very very like brutal <laughs> brutal moves that you know when other people will people were failing to act she was doing it whether or not it brought her love or adulation among the group but after all these years, she's talking again about this. But what we see throughout the course of this episode is she talks about this all the time. He's out there doing what he feels he needs to do, looking for Rick, even though I think the characters both know that this is just, again, his guilt. He let his brother down. He let his brother die. And now he's out there doing what, you know, kind of running away. Meanwhile, she keeps showing up, asking, you know, saying the same thing. I can't come by, but here I am. Keeps coming and going and coming and going, like, and saying the same thing over and over again. We start to see this through the flashbacks that they have, that they are having the same conversation, and they, as they show the time go by. Um, you know, talking about how the world will catch up to us, and he's, you know, saying that he's not going to let it. Um, I at first thought that it was really interesting that when they find the cabin that's owned by Leah, it brings back again what I was saying in the beginning, is don't they know, like he knows where everything is. Um, it, when they even talk about where they're at, what they're doing out there, you know, like where, like when he describes to Carol, like if we get lost, if you get separated from me, meet me here, this is there, and this is that, and there, and everything else. Was he kind of subconsciously looking for this cabin? Did he, because it just feels weird that he wouldn't, for, he would just forget that it's there. Unless subconsciously he didn't really know where he was leading them. Um, because, you know, we as we see in the flashback, he's mapped this area out. He's been out there thoroughly mapping the complete area. Um, this is where we get to be introduced to Leah. Now, will Leah become a character later on? Will that be part of their spinoff? Uh, looking for her. Because if you've seen this, you know that she disappears at the end. Uh, she's played by Lynn Collins, by the way. I, I really like this actress, and you don't see her. And for me, I I don't know what she's been in. I haven't I didn't check her IMDb, but I I remember her back from True Blood, uh, X Men Origins Wolverine. Despite how bad that movie was, she's not bad in it. Um, also uh, in the movie John Carter, uh, from a few years back, she was working a lot back then. I don't know. Again, maybe she's on some TV show that I just don't follow. But uh, she's a pretty good actress, and she's a very lovely looking... She's beautiful. <laughs> I'm just going to say it right now. She's beautiful. And um, it's, it's interesting to see this side of Daryl, too. You got two people out there alone who both claim to not want anybody around. That they just want to go through their thing. Other people, you know, are a problem. You know... I also like that Carol knew about this. Not everything, not all the details, but she knew. And it gives us some really great insight into Daryl. Because we really don't get that a lot all the time. You know, whenever you have a Daryl episode, it's centered in the now. 
not in the past. You know, this could have easily been an episode that if they wanted to do a flashback, bring in Merle. Talk about how Earl, you know, like what life was back then. Except when Daryl first started this show, if you were going to do a flashback, you would have had to do it for a really long time ago because Norman Reedus looks way different than he does. And not just the hair. Um, if you're going to do something like that. But, uh, you know, they, they say they want to be left alone, but really they're looking for something or someone. I mean, he's looking for Rick and she's out there. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to say what she's exactly looking for. They're both looking for a connection, I think, with anything, anyone, anything to make them feel alive again. Because she talks about, you know, losing her squad of people that, you know, became family. You know, like, she had a son that wasn't born from her, but, like, similarly, Rick is Daryl's brother, but they're not blood-related. And it doesn't change the fact that family's family... Uh, when you make them family, you can make any anyone your family, and it's been shown like over the course of all these years that the Walking Dead family, you know, may not be blood related, but they are a family, as splintered and as many of them as that are dead now uh, as it is. But um, they become more than friends, so that answers the asexual part of. <laughs> <laughs> of of Norman Reese. I mean, you know, they, they don't show them having sex, but, you know, they kind of lead it to insinuate that things have gone to a more serious level. Um, and, and maybe it feels a little rushed in the end. They kind of move things kind of quickly uh, to speed it up. I mean, this is a 50, well, it's like a 40-ish minute episode when you count, I didn't count the uh, inside the episode stuff. But they did kind of have to move things quickly in the flashback to get there. It would have been nice if they had trimmed down a little bit of the beginning uh, to get more of Daryl and Leah's stuff. There's probably deleted scenes uh, that will be on like the Blu-ray uh, for this episode. Because it feels like that this is an episode where they would shoot a lot of stuff. A lot of extra stuff, character-wise. Um... But she asks him to choose, and when he leaves and comes back later, she's gone. And it, first thing it made me think of was, um, oh, Negan's buddy that, that with the burned face. Why can't I remember his name? Uh, who, who lost his wife because she was part of Negan's harem and she left. And eventually I think they, she's part of something now over on Fear, or maybe she's coming here on this show. I can't remember. But it made me think of that relationship of somebody who just, he went looking for her and she's gone and he left the note. And I feel like it's kind of similar here. Uh, he fight, goes back to the cabin, leaves the note of, uh, I belong with you, find me. Like he made his choice, he just made it too late. And now after all these years, she's still gone. Is she dead? Is she alive? If you don't see a body, it's a great way to always keep something open-ended like that. Um, but this is where the conflict for Carol and Daryl becomes right out there in the open. That, you know, her bringing up that losing Rick, you know, whatever happened to Connie, whatever happened, you know, like all the other people that have been lost, it's not on Daryl. And then he tells her the truth that it's on her. He blames her. Because she never knows when to stop that she, you know she's like but I was right and he's like that's all that matters is you being right and while that's definitely a part of it right I think in the end though she's always just been the one to make the hard decisions when nobody else will and whether or not she's carrying a lot of guilt because of these decisions it's why she's always wanting to run because while she may be right, she knows that, I mean, she's struggled with this before. She's tried to leave before. She's made decisions before. And to be honest with you, when I, as I'm talking about it now, it does, it kind of repeats the problem that this show has, which of being on this long is repeating the same things over and over again. 
And they even talk about that here. We're going in circles. We keep having the same conversation over and over and over again. We don't know when to stop. And I kind of feel like that's a, a metaphor even for the show. That you've got two of the best, you know, two of the, the two most popular characters on the show. Having this conversation about going in circles, having the same conversations, not knowing when to stop. Because you could say that about the show. How far, you know, how many more things are we going to do that are basically the same? Now, maybe that's not what they were trying to say, but that's what I'm taking from it. Is that maybe our luck's run out, maybe a time is over, kind of preparing people for the end of the show. That, like, uh, we really run our course. And before we really do run our good luck, our good fortune, our, our, our good will with people it's time to start winding down. And I thought that that was a really interesting way to end it because she's basically saying, you know, I think, ah, you and my luck has run out. But we know that's not true. We know that this is just difficulty in a friendship right now. Friendships are like this. I was thinking about friendships of mine that are like this, that have gone through these kinds of ebbs and flows where you really don't like each other very much at times or speak it makes me want to like reach out and fix some of that stuff <laughs> and when a show can make you do that when a show can make you think about things like that i mean that's those are the things and that's why i you know my, i feel like my channel is a little different as we talk about these things that how it makes us feel more than oh the pacing it was this or oh hey you know the lighting or the editing and yada 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 we talk about that stuff but we also mostly like to talk about how it makes us feel inside about our lives because these characters are relatable and they fit you can oh they they find ways to make us be able to infer our own lives into the experiences of these characters and something that i've always really appreciated about the show and with robert kirkman's comic is the realism of some of the character writing as far as relationships go and as far as episodes about relationships go this was a pretty damn good one uh, I can't wait to see what they're going to be doing next week. But all in all, if you like this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell for all notifications. Otherwise, we'll be back next week with episode 19. Have a good day, everybody. Peace out.